So the plan for today is to install this new Vance & Hines exhaust system on my 2023 Lowrider S. And I'm very excited to get this thing going. This is one of the first mods I'm gonna be doing to this bike. And it's kind of interesting, even in the only the week or so that I've owned it, you know, friends and family that are seeing it for the first time comments on how quiet it is stock. The stock exhaust is actually one of the only things that both visually and then of course audibly, I'm kind of just meh on. You know, the rest of the bike comes looking super aggressive, but the stock exhaust is, it just doesn't give you, uh, you know, kind of what you expect when you ride a Harley. So I'm excited to get this Vance and Hines installed today and really get after that quintessential Harley sound. I've never worked on a Harley before either, but I used to work on cars and dirt bikes for many, many years. So reading through the instructions for this exhaust and watching a couple videos online too, it seems like a pretty straightforward install. So we will go ahead and roll our sleeves up and get started. All right, so first we're gonna remove our O2 sensors before we pull off the stock exhaust. And then now just the same thing with the front O2 sensor, which is right down here it looks like. All right, that one's out now as well. Let's go ahead and disassemble the stock exhaust. So with this model and exhaust, because you have to space it out for the exhaust to fit, you do have to remove the right side control peg and brake pedal. All right, now that we got the stock exhaust off, we need to remove the flanges and the O2 sensors because we're gonna reuse those on the new system. And this is where I try really hard not to Stab myself in the thumb. I'm trying to get these snap rings off. Oh. That was actually not that bad. Now getting these O2 sensors out, when you're removing them and putting them back in, you want to make sure you let the whole cable spin without bending it because there's some fragile stuff in there you don't want to be damaging. And then also, you don't want to misplace when you go to reinstall your front and your rear O2 sensor. So as I'm taking the rear off right now, I'm gonna mark it with a zip tie so I can remember which one is which when I go to reinstall here in a bit. Even though this bike only has 160 miles on it now, I am gonna go ahead and replace the head gaskets as well while I do the exhaust just because, you know, they're probably fine. It might be a little bit of overkill, but to go through all this work and then have an exhaust leak would really suck and, you know, they're like, 12 or 15 bucks. Before we unbox the new pipe, just throw down something soft to put it on. So I did decide to go with the black exhaust rather than the stainless. I just wanted to stick with the really blacked out looking Harley. It is so surprising how much smaller all of the pieces are compared to the stock exhaust. And again, that's one of the things that aesthetically looks so much better on the bike is just having the short condensed fat pipe versus the long stock two into twos, which I did go with the two into one system. They seem to sound better from what I've looked at online and I think visually they just look better as well. So next up, we're gonna install the bracket for the exhaust onto the bike. On the instructions, there is actually no torque specs for how tight really anything should go. So I did call Vance and Hines and they pretty much said, the only thing that needs actual torque specs is going to be the header flanges. So for the rest of these components, they said just hit it like twice with the impact gun, just a quick boom, boom, just to make sure it's tight all the way. Next up, we're gonna put our flanges back onto the new pipe. And this I feel like is one of the downsides of having the black system is trying to do this without it getting super scratched up. But it's never gonna look as good as it does right now, right? So it just comes with the territory. And then next up we are putting the O2 sensors back in, if I can find them. And then we're just gonna Grab our adapter that this system needs. Everything takes twice as long when you freaking lose it all the time. But in the bag where it's supposed to be. All right, so we'll do a little bit of anti-seize. Here we go. So we'll get this snug, but not overly tight. 
And then another little bit of anti-seize on the O2 sensor threads. There we go. And then the same thing we mentioned when we were taking these out. When you get the threads spun back in, you don't want to just sit here and twist the actual nut itself. You want to let the whole thing spin with it just because of all the fragile wires that are inside here. You don't want to break anything. All right, time to put the front header back on, just using the same stock hardware. And this is where I'm really gonna try hard not to scratch the hell out of these new black pipes. Just hand tight for now. It's hard to see, but this right hand nut on the front header, both getting it on and off, has been the hardest part of this whole process so far. There's almost no wiggle room. So thankfully, at least for the moment. I only have to get it on finger tight, but I did seem to have most success coming at it from this side so far. We'll resume that battle here in a bit. Now, for the rear, which should be much easier. Next it's time to put the muffler on using this little dog bone bracket and these two guys. All right, I'm time popping forward a couple of days here and the pipe is on. There's only a few small steps to go before we're ready to fire this thing up and finally hear how it sounds. The last couple of days ran into a couple of small snags and I really wanted to prioritize efficiency of kind of just getting this project finally completed so I decided not to film. The things that I ran into were actually pretty laughable in hindsight now as far as issues go, but with that being said, I wanted to take a couple of minutes just to kind of review what those are simply because when I was looking for online feedback um, as far as other people who may have run into these problems, I actually didn't come across anything and hopefully it's still helpful to just reference real quick in case anybody else who's stumbling across the same issues is also looking for uh, feedback. So again, just for context, this is my first time wrenching on a Harley, so there's expected to be somewhat of a learning curve. The first issue we ran into, uh, and I'm saying we because my dad ended up helping me a ton on this project, but the first issue we ran into was getting the front header reinstalled snugly, and particularly the most forward-facing bolt or nut for the header. It's just such a cramped, tiny space or whatever that while I was able to get the stock exhaust off relatively okay, getting in there and getting the, the bolt seated properly and tightened was really impossible without getting a couple of the tools that we were missing. So we had to go run out to the store and get a swivel head ratchet so that we could get in there and seat the nut properly and then get tightened on there. Um, and then subsequent to that, I've never seen an exhaust where the flange does not sit flush up against the actual exhaust port and trying to really get it seated and trying to figure out why we didn't want to over tighten everything of course but you know there's probably an eighth of an inch at least of thread still remaining you know the header was being seated in the exhaust port properly so we just could not for the life of us figure it out um, and then we did end up getting on the phone with Vance and Hines emailed them a couple of pictures and had their uh, mechanic or their tech review it and they did confirm that it is within spec and that it's okay as long as everything is seated properly because the flange itself does not actually create the seal it's just the exhaust going into the um, exhaust port right the header going into the exhaust port and as long as the gasket is seated properly and snug and the flange is holding it on there tight there should be no issues again as long as it's within spec I did also confirm that with my local Harley dealership as well getting new gaskets to throw in there is just never a bad idea plus they were like six bucks or something I purchased the exhaust on the website, scrolled down and it showed the gaskets as like other customers frequently bought these with that system. However, those actually weren't the right gaskets. They were smaller than the ones that actually fit this bike, even though technically it says on uh, the Revzilla website that these gaskets did fit the lowrider. Had to pause, run to local Harley dealership to get gaskets for that. And we just burned a bunch of time not having the proper uh, either tools or supplies on hand to begin with. And then the last big hurdle we ran into was when we went to go install the spacers that come with the Vance and Hines pipes so that your mid controls and your brake pedal are moved out and can actually clear the new exhaust system. 
The bolts that we received from Vance and Hines when we went to go add the spacers really seemed like they were bottoming out with plenty of thread still left on them, meaning that the spacer itself was not seated all the way flush and had some wiggle room in there. You know, we didn't want to over tighten anything. Talking to Vance and Hines on the phone, they assured us we had the right hardware. And when we removed the stock ones, we chased and dyed the interior threads just to make sure they were clean of any Loctite or locking compound, I should say, that came with the bike factory. And we did clear some gunk out of there, but we were really convinced that we had all of that out of the way. And we thought just the hardware was not matching up what it should be um, until we used the stock bolts to basically chase any of the material out of the threads in the frame again, just really nice and slow, backing it in, backing it out. And that did allow us eventually to get a little bit more of that locking compound that had been really stuck in there. And then the hardware from Vance and Heinz did naturally fit on as it was instructed to. So again, kind of funny in hindsight, just to see how much of the problems we ran into were self-induced and just part of the learning curve or being unprepared with, you know, having the right tools on hand, right? It's a classic problem. But the only thing I will say is I do wish the Vance and Hines instructions that come with the system could be a little more clear about a couple of those things. Uh, mostly speaking to the flange for the exhaust header not necessarily needing to be flush. Um, that one seems a little counterintuitive, but again, this is my first time wrenching on a Harley. So maybe that's just a common knowledge piece that I haven't picked up until now. So we've tested everything right now. Next step is just to finally wash down the pipe so that when we actually fire it up, we don't want to get our, all our oil fingerprints burned into it. And then do a couple of uh, test runs up and down the street just to bring everything to temperature, let it heat cycle. We'll retorque the header bolts, or retorque the header nuts, I should say. And then we'll go ahead and add some Loctite back into the bolts where the mid controls are, just because you really don't want that you know, coming loose, of course. And then I think we will be good to go. We did have one last moment of concern, however. After the bike had been running for a couple of minutes, we started to notice some smoke coming out of what looked like the O2 sensor areas, as well as being accompanied by a pretty nasty smell. My initial concern was that perhaps I damaged the O2 sensor wires, either in the disassembly from the stock exhaust or you know, reinstalling on the new system. But thankfully, after a pretty quick internet search, we read some information about how when a new system gets started up for the first time, especially if it's been you know treated with any encoding that it's just burning off a lot of the residue from the manufacturing process. It did smoke for a little bit and continued to smell but maybe only for the first I'd say 45 to 60 minutes of total riding times and after that I've had no problem since and I am really excited with how this exhaust is.